today I'm hoping to talk to you about student research symposia, uh, an idea and an approach you originated back in 2016. Looking back over the, the years since, how do you see it and how has it worked out uh, versus what you had in mind from the beginning? That is a great question. <laughs> um, I think that what is really been inspiring to me is the way these have developed. And when I say they've developed, it's with the input of all the GLOBE partners that I've worked with over the past, well, since 2016, in creating these events for students. So way back in 2016, um, we started this and I was asked to write a proposal uh, for science fairs. And I didn't really like the idea of having science fairs for GLOBE students because there's always a winner, first, second, third, which is a great model. However, it's not how scientists do science and present their research. They go to a student, they do, go to a science conference and they present their research and they have conversations with their colleagues. And then they go back and hopefully use what the information they've collected to do improve their research and to move it forward. So that was the idea that I really wanted to build on. So way back in 2016, we started with these. There were six of them across the country. They were very small at first. Um, we had, I remember we only had, you know, one person registered week before the first one. <laughs> <laughs> or four weeks before the first one, and there was a serious panic, but we ended up having about 30 students um, at the very first one. And so far, um, we've reached uh, up to 220, I think, when the pandemic came along and we had to go uh, virtual. We went virtual for one year. Um, we did cancel the second year because we were still in the midst of the pandemic. And then we decided to support local events with the support of you. Um, I also have to say a little shout out to our sponsors. Um, the first set of student research symposia were funded by uh, NSF. And then the second set was NASA. And then you came in Dixon with Wylasis. Um, funding them as well. So we've had this joint funding for a while, which has been this incredible um, partnership between nonprofits and uh, government funding. Um, so I think that has really been able to increase our ability to reach more students. Um, well, the, the, the student research symposia with students presenting their research, uh, the students engaging in science research projects, environmental science research projects, has been a major feature of what Wylasis looks for in, in terms of achieving its objective of having students learn to think scientifically, that they will act out the, uh, the scientific method instead of just reading about it in a book. And they'll also see themselves through your student research symposia as being scientists. Yes, that's what actually the data is showing us is that students walk away and they feel like they have done science and they understand that science is about collaboration and advancing the joint knowledge of everyone. But another really interesting thing that happens is there's also we're, what we're doing too is students are excited to help their communities and to study what's happening in their community. And these research projects have been this way for them to say, this is happening in my community, what's going on and how can I help? Um, so it really empowers them to use their scientific knowledge that they're acquiring. And it's a reason for them to, uh, to gain more, right? To gain more knowledge so that they can do good right. in the world. Well and I think there's research that shows that that kind of activity basically increases the stickiness of the whole thing so that the students see themselves in this positive way. They've learned thinking abilities and they carry those into adulthood because they were engaged in something that was of concern in their community. Yes. 
Yeah, and so if you think about it, not all students are gonna be STEM professionals. They're not all gonna be scientists in the end, right? We want more scientists. So that is definitely one of our goals and our outcomes. However, there's a lot of students that may not become scientists, but they had these experiences of coming to the Student Re Research Symposia, learning what science is about and how it works, and so then they just become better citizens and better equipped in their communities to be an advocate for what's happening in their communities. Yeah, so we, the pandemic came along and disrupted everything. So how did we cope with the pandemic? I know the answer, but I mean, in your view, how did we cope with the pandemic? Well, after a first year when we did virtual, which was really, oh no, it's this, I think we had to cancel them in March. And so all of our plans were in place and students had already worked on projects. So we did a virtual one, um, but the GLOBE program overall also has a virtual science symposia. So we knew that we didn't wanna interfere with that particular one. That's a, a large event with many students participating. Um, so, the second year we did kind of wait and decided not to hold them. The third year, so this was last year, we decided to do and sponsor local events with the support of our sponsors. So there were seven GLOBE partnerships or teachers that applied for funding to host local events. It turned out that we had some very large ones with 60 students and then very small ones with seven students. But we overall, we had about the same number that we were having this impact on. Um, what was really interesting is they were all different models. Um, they still had STEM professionals attend, but they were more local STEM professionals. Students still did peer review. Um, but we were also able to reach a lot of students that maybe hadn't or couldn't travel to a larger regional event. So I think that's why we had some of the incredible numbers that we did, along with having these incredible, um, passionate people on the ground who were saying, we still need to have something for people to share their research. Um, so that's what we did. Um, there were some really interesting contracts, contrast between the outcomes of a regional event and a local event, um, because we could reach more students across a broader audience probably. Um, there's definitely a place for these local ones to happen, right? So um, because a, a teacher may be more willing to bring a class of 30, if it's just across the road, <laughs> um, then they would be to fly a class of 30 across the couple states. Um, you're definitely gonna have some numbers increasing locally um, than you would maybe for those events. Um, well, so. Well, this is specifically actually soliciting proposals for these local events uh, and recognizing that it's already March. Um, you know, typically these have been kind of in the April, May timeframe. So our, our window for proposals is they could be proposals to do something this spring in a mad hurry, if you will, or to uh, undertake it in the next school year. Um, so either way works for us, but we really want to continue to complement the large regional symposia, which we intend to continue to co-sponsor with, with NASA, um, but also make these smaller grants to help a local organization pull off a local student research symposium. Yes, and I'll also add to Dixon that one of the things, um, the regional ones are also fifth through 12th grade. And we do that for a variety of reasons, but a lot of it has to do with the travel um, with fifth to 12th grade is a little easier than K through fourth graders. Um, right. so those local right. events are great for the K through fourth grade too, because they don't have those um, same challenges. So it's an, also, that's what we have found. That that's a great point. Events, yeah. That's a great point. <laughs> Tell us about the plans for this year and how they're shaping up. Okay, so this year we have six events planned. Um, our largest looks like it's actually gonna be in Alaska um, in the Northwest. We have over 60 uh, 
students planned um, and where before it's been one of our smallest regional events this year it is large um, and it looks like actually we'll have the largest representation from different states in the northwest as well it looks like montana south dakota and washington will be represented along with alaska so we're really excited about that one and then in the pacific we have um the Elkhorn Slough, which is uh, near Monterey Bay, is hosting theirs. And then we have one at the University of Texas in Tyler, and that's our Southwest. Our Southeast is going to be a joint sponsor between the Infinity Science Center, which is um, in Mississippi, and they work with NASA Stennis. So that's gonna be a great partnership. We have Burke's Nature in Reading, Pennsylvania, which we're really excited about. It's a beautiful site. And so we're really excited about that one. And then we have the Midwest one is at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. And I am super jealous because they have these incredible tours coming up um, in their agenda, along with all the other things that they're doing. Um, you know, the, with the STEM professional review and the peer review and things like that. Um, so all of them have this, are centered around students doing a peer review of each other's work and then a review by STEM professionals. And when that review happens, it's not a judging, it's a conversation between the reviewers and the students. And so a lot of students come in with high anxiety um, because they're talking to STEM professionals, um, but they leave and come out saying, I thought it was going to be scary, but now I know they're just trying to help me and to help me be a better scientist. So that's kind of the framework. And then they do all sorts of cool things around that with doing some data measurements together with students they've never met before from different states. And they get to go on tours of different science uh, venues, perhaps. Um, the one in Wisconsin, they're going on a boat tour. Really cool stuff. So um, they're great events for all kids. And we really try and foster this sense of belonging to the globe community and to the science community. So each of these events are sponsored and hosted by a globe partnership who usually has an area of expertise. Um, so if you are a teacher perhaps, and you're going to the one in Wisconsin, um, you're getting an air quality and uh, phonology instruction time. Um, so while your students are participating in the review, we're trying to provide also this professional learning opportunity for the educators that are coming. Um, that'll also have hopefully prepare them better um, as globe educators in the classroom to maybe do a couple new measurements or to see a different aspect of the program. Um, so each one is very different and there's different, different experiences. All of them, however, will get um, some introduction to phonology because this fall, the North American globe region, including Canada and the United States, is going to be launching a phonology campaign um, where we're gonna ask schools and teachers and students across the country and in Canada to report their green down data. And so it's a large event. Hopefully everyone will participate in it and we're really excited to see the data that comes out of it. The country coordinator in Canada, Dr. Kevin O'Connor and I, we're putting together now some webinars on how to take the measurements and also bringing in some scientists that'll talk about the data before and after the event. Jen, I can't tell you enough how much I admire and am grateful for you creating these student research symposia. It's become the largest funding activity Wileaces does so far. That may change in the future, but you know it's been a wonderful way for us to to deploy our resources to really benefit um, students and the Globe program and the environment. Mm -hmm.